Knowledge is power. And this is Powerful Stuff. Wellness Education Cannabis Advocates of Nevada present the Weekend 702 Nevada Cannabis News Hour with your host, Jen Solis. For the next 60 minutes, we'll take an in-depth look at the cannabis reform revolution sweeping the nation. The phone lights are open at 731-1230. That's 731-1230 or toll-free. Toll-free. 1-866-820-5528. That's 1-866-820-KLAV. Now, let's bring on the host. Here is Jen Solis. Welcome to the Nevada Cannabis News Hour. This is Kurt. Uh, Jen Solis is out of ill today, so we're going to be tipping it up for her. In the studio with me, I have uh, Perry Haichu. Good afternoon. Raymond Fletcher. Hello. And Mark Saint from Saint's Addiction or Prince by Saint. Thanks, man. Welcome. So, so Mark, you were doing uh, the uh, official HempFest t-shirts uh, out there at HempFest this weekend or we last did. weekend, weren't you? We did. Yeah. So yeah. What, what was your take on HempFest? Ooh, man. Um, it, makes, it makes sense to me that now um, I think it sets precedence for what's happening in Vegas. So it was like a big hold your breath moment. What's going to happen? Are they going to start tackling everybody at 420 in the middle of it? And then for the most part, they were pretty cool. The cops only asked a few people to put up whatever they were, you know, just put it out real quick. And then right about the right time, about 420, it was uh, permanently hazy and perfect, no perfectly doubt. cloudy. There was definitely some uh, palpable tension among the patient community. We mm-hmm. could we could definitely feel right. that. And we're really, really happy that the... Uh, basically hands-off approach was taken and that the event was able to go off basically without a hitch and i knew a lot of people who stayed away from the event because of i guess paranoia or whatever they were just so disappointed that they didn't come after you know hearing all the reports and seeing all everyone's facebook posts fear mongering basically yeah yeah. and that's the hold your breath moment right there yes the hip fest what's gonna happen yeah Yeah. i i know the first time that i i needed to medicate because i was out there you know working the booth Mm -hmm. um it still hadn't right it still hadn't started Mm -hmm. you know the event had started (laughs) but it had been only been going on for three or four hours and people weren't really out there medicating and open right so i know i i went and uh we were trying to find a spot. I think everybody was trying to find VIP. <laughs> yeah. Right. I, well, I just went I know to, Ray was a vet, dude. So I just was, went to the car. I didn't I want to be made an there. example of. So <laughs> Right. And that was the other thing. I didn't want anybody to get something superly harassed, and they weren't. So congratulations to the Clark County Police Department because they were really cool about it. And the hands-off approach worked because then nobody had a fight. Nothing went wrong. Yeah, it was incident-free. Yeah. You're absolutely right. And that's what I was going to highlight was the fact that it was incident-free. And you look at the number of festivals and events in our community that involve alcoholic beverages. Ooh. You know, and the number <laughs> number of fisticuffs that happen, the number of incidents, all Arguments. the drama. You know, and then when you come to a cannabis gathering, you don't have all the drama, all the fights or anything. And I hope that the elected officials... Uh, people in charge take note of what happened so when they are making their decisions you know for future events for functions and for business opportunities for people that they remember what the cannabis community did and didn't do on that wonderful day mm-hmm. yeah let's hope they remember in april well they set precedents for it i mean no one ever wants to hit on that topic but by drug of choice right alcohol by far every time and 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 one of the what's my favorite statistic for las vegas is that we are the number one consumer of alcohol in the world and just prescription because, drugs. yeah because of the 24-hour cycle and the being open the whole open container on the street so um that right there just puts us in a whole nother level and guaranteed there's always somebody raising their voice i think law enforcement started to get a clue of <clears throat> of the uh passive nature of the cannabis community when they started to to encounter the edc crowd which was expected to be this big raucous event and a bunch of you know trouble was going to happen all these kids are coming and it turned out that you have hundreds of thousands of people coming and there's no trouble at all and then you have a event like uh the national finals rodeo that comes in Mm -hmm. with maybe one Bud lights a sponsor like yeah one fifth Mm -hmm. of the population and you have you know all kinds of fights and all kinds of incidents and things like that and it ended up that metro came out in support of lobbying for 
the return of EDC the following year, and that's when did I started you, to. But did two people die at EDC? This was the like, first couple of years. Okay. They didn't. I don't know how uh, vocal they'll be in their support after this. Okay, but, but you're you absolutely know. right on that. Uh, somebody it, OD'd on this, the first this last day. One. Yeah, the yeah. last EDC yeah. Yeah, before he sure even did. got to the festival. Right. So we, we didn't have any incidents like that. I didn't even hear about any uh, drugged driving after the after the right. thing. I, it no. was like it was incident free. All the news that was out there was completely positive about Fantastic. it. And uh, the Review Journal did a nice big uh, yeah, photo section on the back yeah, on the back of one of their things. And it seemed like they hit everybody who was you know everyone right. that they hit was like local people too. So that was kind of refreshing to see that the news was actually finding the. Locals. I'm glad you said local. That's the key word because I'm a local business owner and and we don't get it's a tight community mm -hmm. like right you know i tell uh, no, most people won't know this but i've known kurt for over 10 years and um just being around these people that we normally see at the events they become your friends you want to see them succeed too mm -hmm. you know like uh what's her name with the uh jewels with the canon nurse and and just seeing her out there she'll do the job fair and this is a woman that's pressing for um nurses to actually use medicine that works Mm -hmm. Can I say that? <laughs> Can I say that? And, yes. and, and stop writing those scripts for her people, pumping them full of scripts. And then um, now she finally gets exposure. And I saw her. She was, I think she was even on part of the, uh, the interview, right? Like she got a little uh, TV action too. Yeah. Sure. There, was, yeah. The, there was a lot of news cameras out there. I saw interviews with Las Vegas Normal. They did interviews with us yeah. and, and, and Jules and a lot of other members of the community. So, And one, yeah. one other refreshing thing is the people of Hempfest were very welcoming to the, to the local the local businesses and the local right. the local activists and and wanted wanted their help in promoting this and making this successful right. so i think that was part of their that huge, was shay yeah i she think that was in, part of their was huge like, success was in on it. involving the community instead mm -hmm. of well, how about those two dollar tacos at the cord booth right next to it <laughs> <laughs> yeah i uh want you food i uh got me a couple of those also they were delicious oh, I, were. I must confess <laughs> So anyway, uh, let's get, let's go into local news. Uh, we have a meeting tonight in North Las Vegas uh, with the city council. They're going through some special use permits for the cultivation and for the production. So if anyone has any licenses in there, then that uh, go on down to city of North Las Vegas at 7:30 and have your voice heard. What's the address again, Kurt? Do you have that available? Mm. I'm not sure. <laughs> a smoke we, we show should, doesn't have their address ready. We, we, we should know the stuff on the top of our head by right. now. We're polished. Hey, we, we just know how to get there by now. You look good doing it. That's uh, all that It's matters. at 2250 Las Vegas Boulevard North in North Las Vegas, Nevada. So Nice. Awesome. I didn't write it down fast enough. That's okay. <laughs> what else? You got anything else over there, Kurt? Or you want me to move on to... Uh, Dr. Gupta? Or? Yeah, let's, let's see what Dr. Uh, Dr. Sanjay's been saying. Okay, uh, CNN's chief medical correspondent, Dr. Sanjay Gupta, discussed the po possibilities and challenges in expanding medical marijuana at the Institute of Politics on Wednesday during a John F. Kennedy forum. It was moderated by Harvard Medical School associate professor, Dr. Stacy A. Gruber. And it comes just two days after the Harvard-affiliated McLean Hospital announced a landmark new program examining medical marijuana. The program will explore the potential impact of medical marijuana on cognition, brain structure, and function, according to the announcement. And it was funded by a $500,000 gift from best-selling crime writer Patricia Cornwell. Ooh. Yeah, uh, Patricia Cornwell uh, has participated in at least 14 published studies on the effects of marijuana since 1995. Last year, she appeared in Sanjay Gupta's Weed on the special, special on CNN, and she moderated a conversation with him about marijuana on Wednesday. She says that the need for studies come from the fact that the policy has outpaced science. Well, what I like about this forum is Dr. Gupta started the, off the conversation by discussing his, what they would call an about face, referring to his well-known 2013 CNN column in which he apologized for misrepresenting marijuana to the American public. Dr. Gupta stated, I realized that I had, in my own way, probably dismissed many patients as maligners who were just trying to get stoned. And there are a lot of those people. And I think it's important for somebody as Dr. Gupta's stature to come out and make a statement like that, especially at a Harvard a John F. Kennedy forum, I mean, that that really speaks volumes. 
Yes, it does. So hopefully this study will provide useful medical evidence for lawmakers considering legalization and doctors weighing treatment options. They have to. Well, on a, uh, a lighter note, there is another celebrity trying to get into the medical marijuana product business. Um, <clears throat> Melissa Etheridge is attempting to start a line of cannabis Who? infused wines, apparently. The, Melissa Etheridge. The rock and roll star? Yes. Yeah. No way. <laughs> So, um, knew it. the oncologist knew told Miss Etheridge that she had cancer and she could either take marijuana or pills for her chemotherapy right. treatment. So, of course, she decided to go with the marijuana. And she's been an outspoken advocate for a long time. And she is releasing an album and kind of getting a little bit of press right now. So she took the opportunity to announce that she's trying to release More the this this product and she wants to expand it into a whole range of cannabis infused wine she thinks that you know the wine market is so <laughs> is so big and the cannabis market is so big that they could easily cross paths and you know i thought for years that, uh, yeah the first time i saw uh, hops where you make beer out of yeah. i always thought that you could make uh, beer out of cannabis because it looks so similar i think it's in the same family or something like that but i, ne I had never actually thought that you could infuse wine instead so that's very uh but that's it, crossfaded. It's, it's clever. It's funny yeah, that yeah. you said cross, but that's crossfaded. <laughs> Alcohol and marijuana together. Yeah, I'm, I'm right. not. I'm not too sure how I I feel about combining those two, right. especially as a medicine. I mean, I know a lot of people use uh, alcohol as medicine. Self medicate. Yeah, and uh, and I do understand that it does have some medical, you know, qualities, but. I just it'll kill you. Yeah, I'm just I, I would I would prefer that you came out with marijuana infused tea line or something instead. Right. <laughs> yeah, I think that'd be a lot better. I mean, we, we have enough uh, alcohol products right. on the market. <laughs> we'll I see mean, how, come we'll on, see twisted tea. <laughs> I and like, everything else. I like what's this um, Baby Bash's new product. Put that out. When you go get a Marlboro pack, you can get a, a cancer stick, but he now does the pre-rolled joints in the Marlboro pack. Oh, those were awesome. All you got to do is just flip the you, package right, open. Right. Yeah, it's, I was in Zip uh, Medicaid. You were vip, yeah. vipping. I, I, I was yeah. vipping with Bash. You're rubbing <laughs> elbows with Bash. I got you. And what and what comes next? Do you, do, you add that, do you add that caffeine shot to that too and make it like a four loco of tea? Of course. <laughs> the four loco. Hey, it, if, if you super got some loco. Cannabis, don't give him any ideas. <laughs> it's already yeah. Someone's already taken it. If, if you got some cannabis infused coffee, I'm down. You're down. <laughs> I'd like to see you candy flip a little bit. Well, I, I used to I used to get some cannabis infused fudges and caramels, and I would just stir those into my coffee in the morning and oh make cannabis gosh. infused coffee, and it was a great way to start today. Going to your Halloween house. <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of uh, the edibles and the infused products, uh, just recently we had a, a line of marijuana infused sodas blowing up literally, product. <laughs> literally blowing up <laughs> when top shelf cannabis bought marijuana infused pomegranate soda for their store they they may have been worried about their profit margins or that the new product might not sell the, re the retail dispensary in Bellingham, Washington, however, couldn't have expected the product to disappear in the way that it did what? that is with a bang <laughs> They exploded? Yes, that's right. Uh, the, Zach Heffron, the dispensary's manager, told the Washington State television, television station it sounded like a shotgun going off when the first one burst. <laughs> that's right, the first one, according to the news the report. One. Hundreds of bottles exploded at Top Shelf and two other Washington State Weed dispensaries. Weed abuse. <laughs> Weed abuse. That's that ridiculous. That's, that's a waste. Way to so, yeah. In Washington. Yeah, that was in that was in Washington. So he said you could actually feel it uh, feel it explode. That it was that explosive. <laughs> That's funny. I've yeah. had homemade beer blow up, and nothing like that. Not, yeah, nothing that violent. Yeah, yeah but the, it rocks in your mouth for sure. Yeah, <laughs> in your hands. Right. Yeah, the 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 brewers said it was simply a fact that the batch had a higher yeast content, uh, uh, and and one of the byproducts of yeast is excessive carbon dioxide. So, I actually used to brew beer myself too, and it, uh, if you put too many sugars in, because I actually fermented it right. in the bottle, it would create too much too much yeast, and uh, yeah. and it, it would explode the bottles too. So now, is the yeast always alcohol? Since you did it, like, is it always once it goes through fermentation, that's the byproduct is alcohol, right? Well, the alcohol comes from the amount of sugars you put in. Right, from that sugar, and then it gets dissolved, and that's alcohol. So this drink from Washington must have had alcohol in it, right? Well, no, yeast. they don't. They don't. They don't have to ferment it. They uh, okay. So. Learning. So, I didn't even know you brewed beer. Uh, yeah, I brewed beer back when, back when, uh, back in those days. Back yeah, when you first met me. <laughs> <laughs> when you drank. <laughs> yeah, when I actually right. when I drank before yeah. I before, before I discovered I could use cannabis for medicine. Yeah. yeah. I was one of those people that self-medicated with alcohol because I was in such severe pain 
that it took a ton of alcohol just for me to get out and be be around people because it was just it was it was unbearable so. can, can i say that real quick that just because you've been so awesome that 10 years so you, the, the man you used to be and no one knows this was very miserable and when we worked together i mean he was that guy that just looked so miserable and was so round from drinking and i didn't know you had a pain issue at all but like you're like a happy camper and you've totally switched over your life so i'll i'll, I'll speak on that all day every day Thank you. And that's one of the reasons we have you on the show is because you are an advocate for this and, you know, you've seen the change. So, Oh, my God. (laughs) No, seriously, night and day. (laughs) Rapper Little John. Yeah. Turns out for legalization. (laughs) Yes, I did. (laughs) Turns out for legalization and new PSA. Rock the Vote, the voter awareness campaign targeting young people, posted a new video on YouTube this week. The video uses numerous celebrities to bring awareness to the group. Hashtag turn out, turn out for what turn initiative? <laughs> the cherry on top for marijuana advocates comes when Little John states that he is turning out for marijuana legalization. Wow! He is shown in front of an American flag, wearing a suit and smoking a comically large joint. Light up for what? Light it up for what? I I love that he's uh, trying to get people to get out there and vote, but I kind of wish that he would have released this a little bit earlier, considering that you have to register a month before you vote. And he released it basically. Sounds like product placement. Yeah, he released it the day before the freaking deadline to register was. So I don't know how many people he actually turned out to vote for. Well, speaking of, early voting (laughs) starts this Saturday. so On the 18th, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's right. So if you have Twerk nothing, the vote. if you have nothing to do on Saturday afternoon, Turned that's a what? good thing to do. No doubt. Okay. Well, in sports, um, Adrian Peterson of the Minnesota Vikings, who's nice. been in the news a lot lately, is apparently facing rearrest after admitting to quote smoking a little weed. Oh. Now, this has nothing to do with the NFL and his problems on the field. Apparently, he was already on probation. And uh, when he walked into court for his mandatory drug test, he just said, yeah, I smoked a little weed. So they're like, okay, well, in light of this statement, you know, the urinalysis is unnecessary. So they're just going to charge him again. He was free on $15,000 bond. And his trial is scheduled to begin December 1st. Are you since, serious? Since September 17th, Peterson has been barred from any and all team activities oh. until his case has been adjudicated, also, although he's still receiving his $11.75 million Good. annual salary, which broken down Good. to divide by 16 games is about $735,000 right. a right. game. <laughs> Right, and mind you, he blew out his knee like right at one of the playoff games and one of the best running backs of all time, and yet now that's what stopped him. Like, really? <laughs> right. Yeah, the guy was just an incredible talent. He's unbelievable. So it's kind of disappointing Small to see of this become Small of the story of him. Yeah. So it's uh, about time for us to take a break, our first break here, and we'll be back with uh, our 420 Celebrity Moment and some more nice. celebrity news. help getting your Nevada medical marijuana card? Dr. Reefer is now accepting new patients. There are no medical records required we have of doctor on staff to give you a thorough physical examination. There is a 99% approval rate for patients. They also have a money back guarantee. If you don't qualify, you don't pay. Free consultation is available. Call 702-428-0000. 702-428-0000 to get your Nevada medical marijuana card today. The Von Dank Group offers turnkey solutions for all your cannabis needs, bringing transparency and responsibility to a young budding industry. Helping patients by producing the cleanest, safest, and most potent medicines and infusibles possible. The Von Dank Group is a design, management, and consulting corporation with over 30 years of industry experience and knowledge of the dispensary, edibles, infusible kitchen, and large-scale cultivation of cannabis manufacturing facilities. Let the Von Dank Group help you grow your cannabis business from seed to green. www.vondank.com Green Spot Hydroponics is a Las Vegas-based distributor of specialty indoor and outdoor gardening supplies. Locally owned and operated with over 3,000 square feet of inventory. Expert and friendly staff to help you with all your growing and hydroponic needs. Our pricing and service will not be beat. We help you grow. 3355 Westlake Mead Boulevard, just behind the Texas station. Mention we can and receive 10% off. Call us at 702-463-6000. 
That's 702-463-6000. Welcome back. (laughs) That sound indicates it's time for our 420 moment. Uh, Today we're going to honor celebrity honoree Carl Sagan. Nice. Uh, Carl Sagan, how do I put this? Um, well, he's a pretty dynamic force in modern culture. The guy has, God, he wrote Cosmos. He mm-hmm. did all kinds of amazing science. <laughs> Good way to put it. <laughs> yeah. he but probably... people had always kind of theorized, like, oh, you know, it was Carl Sagan, like a closet pothead or something like that and they never really alluded to that and he passed away just a few months after california voters legalized medical marijuana in 1996 he he, uh i think he wrote the book contact and all that kind of stuff but he how do i put his memoirs or is that what they call memoirs were released or his life story was released or his wife put in a a, papers i think something like that and basically what it said was he was a big always had been a big supporter of marijuana and was always kind of uh aggressively against the prohibitionists that had held it down and all that kind of it's crazy stuff. i literally just posted about this guy like on facebook randomly well, yeah. t- just now yeah. towards the end of his life sagan utilized mar- marijuana's medical properties to experience a measure of relief he used cannabis to treat not only the lack of appetite and the nausea from the chemotherapy he was going through Dang. but to refocus on the beauty of life in the midst of such torture uh, I got a correction from our from our producer here. His papers were actually released to the Library of Congress. Nice. So, yep. and I, the, I also heard that the, there's there's rumors that he smoked cannabis every day unless he was traveling. I love it when the in- intellectuals get a little respect from you know proof that you know they can still consume and be productive. Well, a lot of them that brings out their creativity. You of know? course. I mean, that's, that's there's certain strains out there that we've learned now through genetics that. That, right. that that foster creativity and there's a lot of artists I know here in the community mm-hmm. that are highly creative people that will tell you that without right. cannabis oh you can't name anybody can't do in the what music they do. you can't name anybody in the music industry <laughs> period all the artists so. well in 1990 Carl wrote to leading drug policy reform campaigners suggesting that they organize a systematic attempt to rebuke sensational partnership for drug free america commercials that he felt quote routine routinely routinely routinely, thank you no worries (laughs) make gross distortions of the scientific facts what year was that 1990. oh this is recent this is like this guy just died then well, you know the whole "this is your egg, bam, this is your egg, gun, this is this is your, your brain, brain on you. drugs." Oh, yeah. wow. that one, yeah, those those stupid oh commercials. Oh my god, dare dare to save kids! Oh, I got you. Oh, yeah, man, I never get me started yeah. on all that. I still got my dare shirt. I got my dare card in my pocket still. <laughs> That's awesome. And I dare I'm you to, to wear you it. On it. <laughs> right, look, wait, he's well, going for it. Well, there's so, a dare card. So I, keep it next to my, I, I keep it next to my patient card. Yeah, but card. why does your wallet say bad? No, just joking. So the Carl Sagan. We salute you as our 420 hey, celebrity. I posted of the day. about him randomly an hour ago. You can check it. I swear, <laughs> just totally random. Comes in threes. <laughs> always, always does. So, in further celebrity news, uh, one of our previous 420 uh, celebrity honorees, Wiz Khalifa, is in nice. the news. He's talking benefits of purple hair, positivity, positivity, and weed. Yes, <laughs> so. my favorite rap artist right now, for sure. Uh, he he says that uh, uh, also he said it's good to spread positive positive affirmations because everybody needs positive reinforcement. Also, he uh, even the most positive person can get a little bit down. So if you hear somebody telling tell tell you something positive, it can bring you right back up. That's my Saints brand. Absolutely. Uh, Wins also tweeted about the benefits of smoking weed. He told me joints and bongs are my favorites. I don't smoke blunts at all. Bongs are cool. They're smoother than the pipe. Yeah. Wiz, yeah. Wiz thinks society could do a better job of educating people about the positive side of weed. That's so, what Wiz always agreed. raps about. Only papers. Yeah. yeah. So Okay, look. Wiz is just a pothead. He ain't no medical patient. And, and, and I hate 
these celebrities that want to jump on the bandwagon and be like, you know what? Cannabis, cannabis, cannabis. Okay. You know what? Go get stoned on your own time, just like the drunks. Yeah, Go get drunk on your own time. Well, you know, he, let those that yeah. legitimately need medicine. He's been medicine. doing that since MySpace, man. Before people got scared to post a picture about smoking marijuana, saying, he was one of the leading artists in the whole scene to actually stand up for smokers' rights. I mean. Yeah. Well, he also, he also quotes in this article, he says, you're only learning the bad parts of it until you free your mind and start to open up to, to right. other things. You then you see a whole other world of people getting cured off of it and seeing how much it helps. Right. So he he might be you know he might be using it recreationally and we don't know he might have medical stuff that he's not telling us that he's using it for. But he is he is out there trying to be a voice for the patients in one way or another. Sometimes we might not agree with the way people get their points across. Right. But I mean, does he need to have his own Kush named after him? I mean, I think it's Kush Khalifa, isn't it? <laughs> and no, I'm just saying you know, hey, look at his comments. His comments about medicine are an afterthought. He's too busy worried about getting high. Well, what Ooh. about these country music artists who are out there making millions of dollars off of, you know, I'm getting drunk on a plane Good and all point. that kind of stuff. Right. Or even we can look a little further Red Solo back. Cup. Yeah, sure. They, you know, there was an article about how pervasive the the alcohol or the alcohol movement is within country music right now, and how it's having an effect on the crowds and things like that that are showing up to the shows. And besides that, uh, what about like bands like the Cottonmouth Kings, who are basically centered around only smoking weed? Sure. Like, sure, they have medical That's songs about medical, but their whole like the name of the band, their tattoos, their stoner wreaking havoc, you know, clothing line, like the whole. Thing it's is about brand. weed. Yeah, it's, it's their a culture. Brand. It's a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's what it is to Wiz and these other people. It's not a hobby. It's a lifestyle. It's right. their when they wake up. It's a statement. They, yeah, it's yeah. all day long, every day. And I'd rather see him out there, see him out there smoking bongs and and uh, and not blunts than. Mm -hmm holding up 40s and, or, and touting the benefits of alcohol. Well, you can be completely unbiased and just say, what is the influence of any artist, right? I mean, across the board, alcohol or marijuana, like sure. they're going to come across and, and you as a listener are going to pull from your favorite artist, which you will, you know? No doubt. Hey, yeah. I'm not out there advocating alcohol use or anything. But I'm advocating But you remember when it was medical. like NWA and they were saying that if you said kill the cop, then you would kill the cop. We're talking about the same thing, you know what I mean? We're like, and, does a listener that hears Wiz Khalifa always have to smoke marijuana? You know what I mean? Hey, I'm just saying, I'm not out there advocating alcohol or anything else. Anybody wants to be a stoner, that's fine. All I know is for me personally, I don't want to take a bunch of pills. I want to use cannabis to alleviate my pain and discomfort Agreed. and all my other issues. You know, hey, if you want to make a dollar off of cannabis, you know, being a stoner, so be it. You know, but I'm not advocating that. I'm advocating right. for patients to have a legal right to have safe access to medication, to be able to grow their medication, and do it in a safe and secure manner. Wiz, Wiz, you got to do better in the community, <laughs> if you're listening. <laughs> okay, regionally, uh, New Mexico State licensed medical marijuana producers, businesses, and bank accounts in jeopardy. According to a Drug Policy Annou Alliance press release, just eight short months after the Justice Department and Treasury Department announced new guidelines allowing banks to work with the marijuana industry, credit unions in New Mexico sent letters to nearly half of those licensed producers stating that they will no longer accept their business and will proceed with closing their bank accounts. The credit unions state that they are unable to adhere to federal guidelines for servicing the industry account. This move forces producers to operate on a cash-only payment system or leaves producers struggling to find another financial institution that is willing to accept their business. No, this is nothing new. We're dealing with this all over the country. You know, pick a, pick a municipality. We're dealing with it. You know, this is just the latest round of this nonsense that we have to go through. I mean, like you said, I was talking to a bank representative from Bank of Nevada a few months ago, and they're like, yeah, kid, we would love to take your money, but until they give us more than a memo, you know, like a memo is not, you know, congressional policy. There needs to be real laws change in order for this to happen. And, you know, people are basically taking risks as they perceive it still by following those quote guidelines because, you know, there's no law protecting it. Aren't the laws changing soon though? That's what they say, but That's you know, what they say. a but lot Eric, of talk. Eric Holder has an opportunity to fix this on his way out the door. He chooses not to. All he has to do is sign his name on a little piece of paper. That's it. Huh. Yeah, and that's to get it be done before 2016, right? 
And then there's the up for another boat. And then That's in November, just to the reclassify, reclassify from classified. Schedule 1. Okay. Oh, does does he have schedule the, 1 marking. Does he have awesome. the authority to solely yes. reschedule it? Just all Tim by himself? Man, yes, executive Tim, authority? Yes. Oh, he, he can do it or it can be done through uh, congressional action. Well, they hate him. They won't, you know, Congress won't do that for him. He'd have to do it himself. But. No, no, I'm saying either Congress can do it or he can do it. Either or can do it. Both okay. of them choose not to act. Easy. No doubt. Easy fix. It's like I'm telling you, you know, I've always feared full federal legalization, and I've gone over this with you a couple of times about how, you know, the industry needs to grow because if we get full legalization too soon, you'll see companies like Monsanto growing our cannabis oh. and companies like R.J. Reynolds and Philip Morris oh, distributing GMO. it. And then before you know it, you know, we're taking drug tests for our weed jobs, and that's not my vision <laughs> of the industry. But... You know, uh, we need to get kind of on our feet and get publicly traded ourselves so that we can at least fight back and and have a little bit of a foothold in. Fight before. money with money? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, and Those with the bigger sack wins? That's the theory, at least. Gotcha. <laughs> uh, that's, <laughs> like you know, that, that, that seems to be what it is as I get, you know, deeper into the, into the system. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but, but still, uh, reclassification isn't going to hurt us. You know, if they if they put it as schedule two, that would that wouldn't. But the schedule one is to literally say it has no medical properties whatsoever, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, which is right. insane because they themselves are growing the medical cannabis government. when the That's University right. of Mississippi Farm right now and distributing it to patients. They opt. Like I think four they patients. They hold. Uh, they hold patents on it but yeah, I think that's another story for another yeah. day and then also we were talking the other night another class one drug heroin oh which God. has no medical value what is oxycotton it's the synthetic, synthetic heroin. heroin but yet heroin has no medical value oh God. i mean it, there's there's so much there's you know it, it it's and and also we had this <laughs> argument me and eric were off the other side yesterday total argument and he was man we were going at it but blow for blow literally you're talking about a different pain threshold i mean what you need to have an opiate that like like that to just get oxy in your in your system and and then for like minor aches and pains like a, a headache maybe some menstrual cramps if i could put that out there and just say that's your marijuana intake you would not take an oxycontin for a menstrual cramp you know what i mean like we're talking about night and day difference you speaking you... from experience well we, or... were, we were just putting out medicines and i knew that this was medically uh, proven to relieve those cramps and other things yes. that you can do slight cramps i'm trying yeah. to i'm trying to make it like you're not going to take an oxy to actually you know and, and for some reason, yeah, for people some, are over medicating. Yeah, killing, killing. What do they say? Kill a fly with a cannon, kind of thing. Like you wouldn't try to do something like this. <laughs> and for right. some of our listeners out there that might not be aware, cannabis is very effective for menstrual cramps. Queen Elizabeth used right. to use it right. actually, absolutely for so, that exact across reason. Across the board. So if it's good enough for the queen, all your women listeners are. I mean, that's, that's, <laughs> well, where did the British get get their cannabis back then? Oh, they probably I thought they were, were doing it in India, weren't they coming from? The or same wait, no, place? duh. Of course, they had Jamaica back then, right? No. The Empire? No. Yeah, that was under English rule. I think that was Dutch. So I, or French. So. But anyway, up, uh, <laughs> more into our regional news here. Uh, up in Oregon, um, Steve Brooks, uh, the guidebook author and TV sh uh, show host Steve Rick Steves, has uh, traveled the world for three decades with an appetite for more than just new foods and cultures. Love it. He's also been a keen interest in understanding how different countries address similar problems. As he notes in his book, travel uh, as a political art. Uh, That's awesome. Yeah, uh, uh, totally. Uh, one one particularly serious issue he's had his eye on is drugs. In part, learning why Europe has fewer drug-related deaths and less drug-related in, in, incarceration and less drug consumption oh, per capita God. than we do here in America. Facts. So, <laughs> incarceration, uh, especially. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we're we lead the country in that. Mm -hmm. So, oh, the world. We lead the world <laughs> yeah. in that. Yeah, exactly. I saw, yeah. oh man, I don't know if this is true, but I saw a chart that said that we have more people in prison than communist China. Ooh. Like, or old Russia. Like, or old Russia. Yeah, yeah, significantly more people than China. And they have what? Like, there's 330, 335 million Americans, and there's yeah. like 1.1, 1.2 billion yeah. Chinese. So yeah. if you do the rough math, they outnumber us three or four to one yeah. by just general numbers. I think if it's we had 736, the same system, 736 citizens and 100 and 100. Yeah. Out of 100,000 people in America, 736 are incarcerated. That mm. seems like a lot. It is a lot. That's... We're the world's largest. We're yeah. leading the way on this. We have 10% of the world's population and 25% of the world's prison Ouch. population. Oh, a proud, a proud American moment. <laughs> exactly. So I figure that's a, that's almost three times as everyone else. So. And this guy's a world traveler too, right? Yeah, exactly. 
In a recent uh, opted for the uh, Oregonian, Steve uh, summarizes his findings regarding marijuana. He says, when it comes to marijuana, some societies simply moralize and criminalize. Others are more pragmatic and work to reduce harm by taking the crime out of the equation and treating marijuana as a health and education issue instead. And it's clear to me we need to end our nation's prohibition against marijuana. Wow. So. Duh. Yep. <laughs> right. <laughs> Needless to say, he was also a longtime proponent of marijuana reform and one of the original sponsors of Washington's historic marijuana legal in legalization initiative 502, so, yeah, which was in voted words, in two years ago. Duh. And like yesterday. <laughs> yeah. You got some news from your old stomping grounds. I do. I do. Uh, there's news from Alaska. The marijuana legalization advocates are outspending their foes <laughs> significantly. Uh, so significantly. I, 12 to 1. Okay. The main organization supporting the cause, the campaign to regulate marijuana like alcohol, has spent over $830,000 as of campaign filings submitted last Friday, more than a dozen times the amount spent by their opponents, the quote, big marijuana, big mistake, vote no on two campaign. I just want a little of that. They've spent 130. Yeah, they've spent just over sixty nine thousand dollars so far for the proponents of legalization. All that spending leaves them with about forty grand on hand for the final push. The opponents have about twenty five thousand to be spent as they choose. But despite spending twelve times more than their opponents and a long history of marijuana libertarianism, supporters of the legalization are not guaranteed to win. Not even close. Polls out this week wow. yielded even polling across the state. And I went to Alaska a couple of months ago for a conference a western governor's conference on drug policy reform and man i could not believe the uh, the level of of uh, draconianism that we were still experiencing up there people are just like oh what about the kids and you know like dope and i don't want to sit next to the dopers in the room and stuff like that and it's just unbelievable how but they're dumping the money on it i mean you just said numbers like a house i think you said another one that was like a car amount and you know, like a full-on car like in a house and you just said that this is what they're up against i mean yeah. I don't know. It doesn't sound like the winds have changed of Washington and Denver making it up north. No, definitely not, unfortunately. It, it's uh, When I was up there as a kid, it seemed like you know everyone was growing and smoking and things like that. Huh. And I really feel like that culture is working against the legalization people, uh, the people who are pro-legalization. Um, it, it's, it's hard to get young people out to vote in a midterm election. Mm. That's first thing. Two, it's very, very cold in Alaska in November. Right. People don't really care. Three, you know, now you're fo you're you're forcing the legalization movement to do two things instead of one. You're forcing them to do a voter registration drive and a get out the vote drive. Mm. If you wait till a presidential election year, you only have to do a get out the vote well, drive because the Republicans and Democrats are doing most of that labor. Well, how for close you. are they? I mean, what's the tipping point there? I know, like, we're, <laughs> like, who? I guess like there are How they close, close? who's the next dropper state like they're voted and like, like who's so close that it's Al imperative like alaska really is super close besides that i think it's alaska and oregon that are voting this time around and then we're up in 2016 year, hopefully yeah. or Wait, 2016 well yeah. we're trying to get it through in the legislative session arizona california even california might be on for 2016 yeah, california's uh well they they announced that they're they're doing a legalization a legalization initiative um, but their whole reasoning behind it was to draw young voters out to vote. There it is in, in this in this uh, this election by putting cannabis on the ballot because they figure it's an attractive issue, and when they come out, they'll vote on other issues. So and I, I I dig that, and I understand, but I'm just really nervous due to the the history of youth voting record uh, for supposedly big issues, and I know this is a different issue. But having yeah. done campaigns in the past, it's just really, really difficult to get young people out to vote during a midterm election. But and they don't ever have. I mean, you said the history of youth voting. It's never, ever like that. It's always the old people that are sitting around that's making right. their politics. They're sitting there and they come through with the senior citizens Th and get right. them to and sign that's up. And that's another problem of having so a midterm election. you need some election. motivation for these young guys. Yeah, another problem for a midterm election. And... We're going to have the people who are probably going to vote against us coming out in the greatest numbers just yeah. to vote against it. Interesting. And that's... You know, disappoint. I mean, you have polls going, you know, 10 points one way, you have polls going 10 points the other way, you know, so there's really no clarification for many, for many national well known uh, polling agencies like Rasmussen or anything like that. It's all these independent, you know, we might, pollsters. I mean, I hate to say this, but well, poor Alaska. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no doubt. We'll, we'll see. You know, it'll be, it's not going to look good if they spent 12 times as much money 
on the the legalization movement and lose right after Colorado and Washington. That's not the momentum we're looking for. We're definitely looking to. It's a fight, though. It's a battle for sure. It's a fight. So, it's a fight. No one we'll said see it was going to be clean, and no one said you're going to have to get up from it. Yeah, you know it's politics. I mean? uh, we'll see what happens in three weeks. At least Alaska gave us Sarah Palin. And she can see Russia from her house. Aww. I wonder what they're doing over there now. <laughs> Smoking weed. Uh, <laughs> speaking of being against your people, over in York, Maine, three York selectmen officially prevent constituents from having a say on the town's marijuana policy. Now, how can you be a representative of the people and prevent your constituents from having you a voice? You said that's Maine? That is me. Okay. Well, that happens all over the place. That happens right here in, in town sometimes. Mm-hmm. Par you know, for the we, course. We, we, yeah, par for the course. I like the way you said that. Yeah. Definitely. That's just, this I is mean, that this is that fight. I expect all these people and, and anybody that's in this game should expect that there's going to be some political uprising, and then they have a mountain of money to jo- to, to jog up to get on top of. Mm. Because of big pharma. Oh yeah. Well, citizens for a safe remain announced. Uh, on October 10th uh, that it will not appeal a judge's decision to allow the York Board of Selectmen to prevent a vote on a ballot measure that would make marijuana legal for adults. David Boyer, Maine's political director for the Marijuana Policy Project, said that it's unfortunate that three out of the five selectmen have needlessly and very likely illegally prevented their constituents from voting on the measure. Now that's eighteen as an adult, right? Like everybody saying eighteen above. I'm, well, I don't eighteen hmm. twenty one. It depends on the state. It's usually reality. between recreational and medical. I think is that's that. What I'm asking. It would be twenty one. The proposed initiative would have made it illegal. Legal. It would have made it legal for adults twenty one and older to possess okay. up to one ounce of marijuana in New York. There is no state law that prohibits local voters. From considering such an initiative, so the selectmen claim that it would be illegal to place it on a ballot does not hold water. Boyer said, "Lewiston and South Portland will be voting on that issue this year, and Portland voted on one last year, and countless other lo- localities around the country have voted on similar measures. Ultimately, voters in York will not be given the same chance." And Vermont too, right? Vermont is Vermont over there. I don't know. New York, that. Vermont, they're all topper, yeah. topper states. Yeah. yeah, they're New England states. All right, East Coast. Okay. Well, it's right. time for our second break, so we're going to take a break now, and we'll be back with more national news and more from Mark Saint. Cannabis has been used as a healing medicine for over five thousand years with no toxic side effects. Is it right for you? The professionals at Dr. Reefer are here to help. Now accepting new patients, make an appointment today at 428-0000. Bring your medical records, or if you don't have them, their staff will work to document your qualifying condition with a 99% approval rate. If you have any of the following conditions, cancer, AIDS, muscle spasm diseases, severe nausea, severe pain, Crohn's disease, glaucoma, or PTSD, call Dr. Reefer today for your free consultation and their money-back guarantee. If you don't qualify, you don't pay. Call 702-428-0000 to get your Nevada Medical Marijuana card today. Finally, Nevada Medical Marijuana dispensaries are opening, but you must have your medical marijuana card to get inside. Call the friendly team at Karma Holistic Health Foundation, toll free, 855-420-1110, or visit GetMedicalMarijuanaNow.com. Karma Holistic Health Foundation will give you legal access to medical marijuana. All veterans receive a discount, 855-420-1110, or visit GetMedicalMarijuanaNow.com. You're listening to the Nevada Cannabis News Hour, produced by We Can, the wellness education cannabis advocates of Nevada. We Can is a 501c3 nonprofit. If you're interested in sponsoring us, donating, or advertising on this radio show, please contact our advertising department at 702 218 5226 or Kurt, K U R T, at WeCan702.org. Welcome back. This is the Nevada Cannabis News Hour on 12:30 a.m. KLAV. Um, in studio, we have uh, guest Mark Saint from uh, Saint's Addiction. Welcome, Mark. 
Yes. So why don't you tell us a little bit about what you do? I know you got your hands in a lot of different irons right now, irons and fires right now yeah. too. So. Well, man, I try to stay busy, man. I brought you guys stickers just so you can have some. Right on. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah, that's Everybody the, loves the Ganja stickers. Ganesh, man. Ganja <laughs> Ganesh. Loves swag. Yeah. Uh, we uh, made this design just in time for Hemp Fest and also launched uh, Weed On shirts just in time for Hemp Fest. And you guys were really time. busy on Hemp Fest. I know when I rolled in, your booth was right smack dab there. You had, you had booth number one. Killer, killer, killer locale. And you, yeah. your spot was hopping. Yeah, yeah. Why don't you tell us a little more about that? Oh, man, I had so much fun, dude. I have to say um, all blessings to God. God and my team because uh, honestly all these guys are ra rallying around some fart of an idea i had in my head and they work so hard 12 plus hours on their feet and uh i don't know it, it makes me very emotional to see a dream come true and everybody work hard to it how, how, how did how did uh saint beach addiction, did i make you yawn how, how did saint's <laughs> addiction come about well saint's addiction honestly is um this is something that guy <laughs> he's all pushing in my mouth yeah i i i honestly like i said it's a, i always say this it's a fart in a skillet because you always have ideas that kind of bounce in and bounce out and then like what are you going to really stick your teeth into and um and earlier the guy was a world traveler i got blessed enough to go actually travel the world so when i was overseas i was already before i left i had this idea of uh tattoo t-shirts and um i wanted to do something with dana white at the ufc and um you know like the fighters tattoos like on the shirt so you can like emulate your own fighter and stuff and and then it almost stopped me from traveling and i was like yeah man I, I'm, I'm like 30 almost 30 not married no kids and and me and kurt we used to work over at uh, finley toyota selling cars and well he worked on the cars i sold the cars and uh that 2008 i mean everybody here in vegas knows like august 2000 september of 08 man we were humming and bumming like 800 a thousand cars a month and um we went to 350 400 just like bap dude and it was the truth it was like seeing it all so realistically seeing everybody's um credit reports come back and uh, uh you know they had five home loans and and and, and dumping their v8 <laughs> diesel escalades and just getting out of dodge so it pretty much it, it painted itself on the wall i was like i have to leave and go yeah yeah i stuck with it for a while i took a almost a 40 percent drop in weight wages just due to that that recession at that point wow. jesus i stuck with it for a while longer and yeah. it was just like yeah know, i couldn't do it man it, it got to the point where the stress outweighed the the paycheck and that's i'm so glad he mentioned that because that's that's the one most important thing that i got out of out of having saints addiction is i switched my addictions you know what i'm saying i literally chose different addictions and uh the stress of that job i know him <clears throat> i'm not trying to call you out bro but you used to wear your belt buckle all the way around your waist and you had a big waist and you were grumpy way all the end of, at that thing and i was up to 236 pounds myself dude i'm like under i'm like 180 89 now and like just unhappy and you're under so much high stress and i know most people have to get up in the morning but sales meetings or beat up meetings and you're not getting enough you're never selling enough and you're you're only grabbing that quick coffee and donut for quick sugar and and, and my waistline and then at night you've worked so hard you're so tired you're gonna go to the bar and get that beer and that whatever steak special they got and that was my routine and i was like Fuck this man i gotta get out of here <laughs> i gotta get out of this no doubt I mean, I mean, I wanted to change my life. And I think when I was listening earlier to you guys' radio station, you guys have somebody else that was talking about igniting and wanting to change lives. That's, that's, that's why I built this Saints Addiction, so I could actually have this platform so I could tell you guys about it. Well, that's certainly awesome. And I know I see you out at First Fridays. I see you out at some of the events. I was going to oh. say, where can we see you next? Where can we find your, your apparel? Well, I usually go to events. I do a lot of local events, but mostly online. So just go to saintsaddiction.com. 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 Yeah. I'm Mark Saint, um, and, and we're multiple saints. So there's Saints Addiction. There's multiple saints that work very hard to make a dream a reality. You know, it's not just one person. It's a lot of people that work hard, and I, and I like it that um, they care. Like, I always constantly have somebody caring about the customer and, like, that, that has that forthright to just be already customer-centric and be like, I'm out for the customer and um, they're, they're saints. They're, they genuinely aren't trying to high sale nobody and they really care about the quality of the product and you getting what you want when you want it. Just get your shirts. Shirts by saints. <laughs> <laughs> That's just awesome. And I, I, I honestly can't recall when, when I had the opportunity to meet you, but I mean, you, you got a great personality, your, your dedication to the community, your advocacy. You know, it's great to see people like you out in the community helping to raise awareness and being involved. So I want to thank you. 
you know, That's sincerely right. for all the efforts that you put forward, you know, Thanks, certainly not only for your business, you know, but for the cannabis community, for yeah. the patients and everything. Yeah. I enjoy First Fridays. I enjoy yeah. hanging out at events, you know. If you look at his profile picture right now, he had my V mask on at First Friday. He, got, he was feeling <laughs> I, himself. I, 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 I He's like, that mask. <laughs> yeah, well, you're, you're usually right across the alleyway from, from us on First yeah. Friday there. So yeah. we, we see a lot of you there. And I know you do a lot of other events like uh, the Vintage, the vintage Bike Night, night yeah, over at the Arts Friday. Factory. Mm -hmm. And so, so if you if uh, factory, yeah always. if you want to come out and see his stuff in person you know just just check oh, out his facebook page check out his facebook page and come out and see yeah. it and like you it do up. Like you do live up. printing on site too shirts don't you by saints yeah the shirts by saints thing blew up um prints by saints we did that live that's what I, that's what we we're doing so i mean part of it was like everybody wanted to make t-shirts for themselves and that blew up and then it was um doing their also their rest of their printing so you know we do the business cards and flyers and all this stuff and mm -hmm. that just grew and i call it the mr t startup kit so anybody that's looking for like got to start their own business and we want to help them actually want to help them grow their brand and uh you're gonna need the stickers you're gonna need the business card you're gonna need the website we just basically set up a, a one-stop shop for a mr t startup kit that you can come in and get get started you know get your graphics right get it on the shirts put it on the flyer and, and and make you look more pro get it get you out there and, and we're here to help you in the community do that grow your small business so and uh, we've actually used uh we can has used oh, uh, right. for some flyers and that's stuff right. also so and that's where we met too dude at the pool party right yeah you remember was, we messed up yeah. many social too gathering. many bags <laughs> might, might have been, might have been medicaid uh -huh. well we, we do have a medicaid. caller on the line uh scott welcome to the show Hey, Scott, what's going Hi, on, guys. bud? What's going on, Scott? Um, hey, not much. I just wanted to say thanks for the show. You guys are doing awesome. Um, I also wanted to comment. I, I noticed the guests. I listen to you guys every week, and the, the guests that you guys had there, praise to God, and I just want to praise to God for that, for giving us such a, a miracle plant that yes. is essentially free. You can just throw it in your backyard. Amen but, to that. Um, praise God for that, and just... Let our church leaders know, you know, there's a big misconception. I'm a minister, and I have to fight this every day. Uh -huh. Whether or not marijuana is God-giving, if you will. It's God's plant. Genesis 1-12, I've like given you all the seeds and plants and herbs to use. I also posted that. Yeah. Honestly, that's what it is, man. That's what Saint's Addiction is, is that that was my... If you're looking at the Ganja Ganesh, it has a cross in the one hand, and he has a joint in the other, and he's balancing this. And I've heard of uh, smoking preachers, and, and God bless you for coming out and saying it, because it's like, I am very spiritual. Most of my friends know that about me. I even have a crucifix on, and it's hard for them to understand. Like, I, I grew up in a Catholic background. I went to nunnery school with the real black top and penguin outfits and i um still i have and the shirts get launched it's the see no evil jesus he sees no evil in this plant you know and everybody likes to demonize it you know they'll skip yeah. over the the alcohol but as soon as you go like spiritual with it or even say skip god oh, man. They, they'll they'll indulge in the alcohol yeah. on the way to it is right what they do and right. they then yeah. you know they celebrate that on the way to indulge in it so and, and las vegas is significantly different i'm from a small town in idaho where the, the city revolves around bars, mm -hmm. you know, and of course, you, Idaho takes a different stance in Nevada as far as the medical community, and it's ridiculous. Right. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, the people feel like they're sinners. This yeah. is what ended up happening. There's a lot of demonizing of it, and especially me as a, the Catholic upbringing. They make you want to do some kind of backlashes for wanting to do something that came from nature. Well, that's really disappointing because I've always felt that as advocates, if, you know, not to sound arrogant or anything, but if anyone's doing God's work out there I really feel like we are you know we're helping people yeah. get their legally prescribed medicine here and help them feel Be better the about themselves and if that yeah if that's not doing God's work I don't really know what is well so that, thanks for listening thanks for your support thanks for doing what you do and uh, Scott um, stay on the line and let Lawrence get your number I'd like to talk with you maybe we'll have you on the show that's awesome you bet. great okay and uh, we're just about done here. We got a couple of last minute things. Um, our Halloween party has been canceled this year due to a location venue. So we're planning a, a Thanksgiving uh, party besides that. Nice. Um, but we will be marching in the Halloween okay. parade on Friday the 31st. So Go to we, the march. Yeah, we encourage everybody to get costumed up and come on out and join us for that. I'll be there. So like us on Facebook. Uh, join us on Meetup. Check out uh, Saints North Las Vegas meeting tonight. 7.30 p.m. North Las Vegas City Hall. That's right. Saints Addiction. SaintsAddiction.com like for, for great t-shirts and products. Wear so. it. <laughs> and so <laughs> until then, we'll be back next week. Thank you very much. I for love listening. you guys. Everybody See that listen. Later. Love you, Vegas. <laughs>